Hi, are your trees climbing, weeping or strangling? Do you know what are four unique figs in Australia? Do you know what you should avoid? This is a journey through a special forest, through a fig forest. I am Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au. We are on a mission to make Australian educational, care and other organizations sustainable, frugal and improve their footprint. Our approach is framed by the triple bottom line framework and underpinned by what we call the five columns of sustainability. And in this video, I'm going to take you to a special forest through a thick forest. And we'll look at one of these five columns, which is greenery. I will share with you what you should know about the four common fix in Australia, what you should avoid, and at the end, we'll reveal something truly unique to fix. But before I do that, why bother? Well, it's true that in Australia, we are horticulturally, botanically blessed with these beautiful, fascinating trees. The city of Sydney's urban forest is set to grow up to 50% by 2030. Adelaide has a 20% target of increased urban canopy by 2045 and Melbourne has, has a 40% target by 2040 from the current 25%. That's all good, but why bother? Well, that's a good question. By the way, I am not creating any of this meaning. I am just sharing the meaning that is already here everywhere around us. But make sure that it stays here. So there are three main reasons. The, f the first one is Australia is one of the most urbanized nations on the planet, with 90% of us living on just 0.2% of land area and 85% living within 50 kilometers from the coast. And this high rate of urbanization is increasing. The second reason is you have climate change awareness, so you understand the link between warming climate and warming cities. This is known as the UHI effect, urban heat island effect. If you want to know more, you can Google it or you can find Michael Mops, who is the expert also known as the off-grid guy. The third reason is, and you of course know, know a lot of this, trees purify and provide air that everyone needs. They uh, create shade that cools our streets down. They provide essential habitat for our beautiful animals, for example, marsupials, flying foxes, birds, and let's not forget butterflies. They have a positive impact on our mental health. And also, they improve the appearance, livability, and economic value of our buildings. So that's all good. What, but what are these four common fix in Australia? Well, let's look at them in, in depth. The first on our list is Ficus pumila, also known as creeping or climbing fig. It's an introduced species, a great and popular climber, so not really a tree, good for covering walls, fences or other structures. But to maintain this growth habit, you must keep pruning it regularly, because only the juvenile foliage creeps to the wall. If you miss that, once it started putting on the adult foliage, there is no turning back. If you then prune the adult foliage, the one that sticks away from the wall, it will reshoot the same. It's maintainable, but needs pruning, otherwise can get messy, heavy and leggy. So if you after woody shrub, you can let it go a bit, but if you want it nicely sort of clutching to the wall, you don't want this to grow away bears fruit which is not edible if you're concerned about slippery hazard or creating mess probably let's not have the fruit you can't eat it anyway looks good in well-maintained gardens also a popular hedge but the adventitious roots can cause a structural damage to some walls that have cracks it's okay uh, for smooth surfaces or sturdy walls or if you don't really care the final point is it can peel off paint. So if you're concerned about the look of your wall, either after its life or when you get sick of it, probably something to be mindful of. Okay, let's move on. So the first tree, first out of three native trees is Ficus benjamina, also known as weeping fig. And it's a strangle, so watch out at night. Native to Queensland, grows from tropics to coastal Sydney, up to about Stratfield but it's too cold for it further south. So you can still grow it further south, 
so in southern New South Wales or Victoria, but rather as a container plant or it's a popul popular bonsai specimen, especially for people who are starting because it's very hardy and hard to kill plant. It's the most cultivated ficus species in the world, out of about 1200 species of fig. Popular street tree, but it's a fast grower and needs pruning, otherwise will get too big. Also a useful hatch. You can see the small leaves in comparison with other two figs that we have on our list today. And the final point about Ficus benjamina is, why is it called weeping fig? The reason for that is, if you move Ficus benjamina or other figs away from their natural habitat, what will happen, so for example from outside, inside and put them in pots, they will drop their leaves temporarily. The leaves will reshoot, but that's the reason for the name, weeping fig. I don't think it's something emotional. The next on our list is Ficus macrophylla, also known as Moreton Bay fig. Also a strangle, so also be careful around, around the town. Native to New South Wales, grows from tr the tropics to about Sydney. The, it's the biggest tree in Sydney Botanic Gardens and it grows up to about 50 meters high and it's quite wide, so its spread would be up to about 50 or 60 meters. Macrophylla stands for big leaves and as you can see, it's, the leaves are far bigger than Benjamina and Rubiginosa, which we're going to target in a sec. Um, and both Macrophyllas and Rubiginosa's leaves have the brown and yellowish sort of rusty color and texture on the underside of the adult foliage. Not so much the juvenile, but the adult foliage. And the final point about Fic Ficus macrophylla is you can see and distinguish it relatively easily because it's got massive buttress surface support roots. You can't really miss it. However, this feature is uh, unique to other figs, not only macrophylla, but yeah, definitely one of the very distinguishing features. And the final tree for today is Ficus rubiginosa, also known as Port Jackson fig. And this one is not usually a strangle, so hey, we can run around the place a bit, that's pretty good. Native to New South Wales, it's the most drought and cold tolerant of the three. Grows from tropics to southern New South Wales, so up to around Biga. Will also grow inland, unlike the other two figs. It likes Hawkesbury sandstone, that's why it's so prevalent around Sydney Harbour. And Rubiginosa is a typical feral fig, uh, growing on rocks and in cracks. It kind of hangs, hangs around the place a bit. Um, in terms of leaves, it's got smaller leaves than Macrophylla, but as far as the differences go between Rubiginosa and Macrophylla, that's about it. The other one would be the size. Rubiginosa grows up to 20 meters or so, Macrophylla up to 50 meters. But unfortunately, apart from that, they're almost identical. So these three trees are not useful, probably not useful in domestic situation, unless you live on a large property, but they are very popular trees, especially in Sydney and in Brisbane, popular street, large gardens and park trees, and we need to protect them. Well, finally, what is unique to fix? The distinguishing feature of all fix is that they are particular in their reproductive structure, because unlike other fruit, they don't have true flowers, and what I mean by that? Well, ancient cultures were fascinated with them because they saw trees bearing fruit, but the trees didn't have true flowers. Hang on a minute, how is that possible? How can a tree bear fruit and how does pollination work? Well, of course, they have flowers, but the flowers are inside out. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Well, each species of fig has its own pollinator, which is a usually a tiny wasp that penetrates through the fig and pollinate, pollinates it from inside, then leaves, then goes to another one, and another one, and another one. That's why in Australia, figs don't hybridize. The figs we eat, Ficus carica, and I've got the one that is grown locally here, these ones we eat. That's why if we grow these, we won't get the fleshy seeds.
because they don't have local pollinator. Unlike these other figs, actually not other figs, they are also Ficus carica, but these Ficus carica are grown in Turkey, where they originally come from, from Middle East, and as you can see, they've got these crunchy seeds. In summary, we looked at the importance of trees, especially our urban canopy, then we looked at the four prominent figs in Australia, so watch out at night, there are some stranglers out there. Keep that ficus pumila flash with the wall if you want that growth habit. We have sustainablebutterflies.com.au. If you haven't done your SQ test yet, head to our website. And lastly, who are we doing this for? We're doing this for, for the environment, future generations, plants, trees, animals, including these beautiful butterflies. So have a great day.